In this video, I'm going to show you how to achieve this with just dry brushing. Welcome to the latest Art of Sophus video where we're going to be dry brushing this beauty. It came out really well, super pleased with this. This is part one, which is the painting of the blue, and then we've got the detailing coming later. So hit your notification bell, subscribe. If there's any questions you have about the techniques I've used or the paints I've used or suggestions for the models or anything like that, please let me know. Something I would like to cover is I had some difficulties in this video with Sotec Green. In fact, I stripped my model and painted it again and didn't realize until after the video that that's what had given me the problem. So we'll put down a list of paints below and you can substitute any of those in, they're absolutely fine, uh, but I'd recommend it if you want a slightly easier time. Any similar Games Workshop paint will do absolutely perfectly as well. So I hope you enjoy the video and tune in. So this is the selection of paints that we're going to be going through, or that we're intending on going through on this model. Things may change at this point. Um, we've got our Holger Blue. You can substitute that for any really dark GW paint, if you like. Um, Inky by Darkness, I believe, is the one that will do that. I'll get that popped in the link below, though. Um, whichever one we deem the most appropriate. So using this to add to the purple to make it super deep, and then we're going to be transitioning through Sotec Green, which is a little bit more colourful than most Space Wolf stuff would be normally but I want to try and do something with some visual interest so that's why I'm going to try and make things a little bit unique and then through to much more standard selection which is Fenrir Jean Grey and that will kind of uh, pull down our saturation towards the end of things and kind of make it look a little bit more conventional but we should have the kind of punchy interesting midsection gained by using purple and the Sotec Green which is fairly hard like it's, it's a pretty hard turquoise um, so there's some green going on in that as well, which is quite interesting. So we move on to base coating. We'll do that in the same manner as normal. We have here a extra large. I have washed this and reset it overnight. You can see how beautiful that point is. Still lovely and soft, perfect. So we'll be using that for all the base coating and maybe jumping to a slightly smaller one to get in the recesses. If you want to know more about basing, um, base coating and our dampening pad and stuff like that, check out our ATST video. We'll link that. That's got the basics. I'll be covering them briefly as we go through, but if you'd like to see them more in depth, then that's what I'll be going for. So first steps first, let's put a little drop of water in our dampening pad. Work it in with your finger, that's extremely important. You're not looking to saturate your brush. The point of this product is that it allows you to put moisture on your brush in kind of a, a systematic fashion. And for our base coat, taking our paints from the side on the palette, Not going straight in there, it's not good for any type of brush really, especially when you're using pretty much neat paint. We've got a little bit of moisture in from our dampening pad, but not a huge amount. And we're just gonna be stipple base coating this. This is the way you'll see me undercoating most things. And part of the joy of it is that you get a very good quality of base coat without it collecting in uh, recess sections. So if I were to approach this in a layering sense, I'm, I'm building up a drift of paint. I'm not sure if you can see that there. There you go, it's catching the light. I'm literally building up a drift of paint in this section, which is not ideal whatsoever. Um, it's gonna take longer to dry. It will, could even show up in our final paint job. And it's actually gonna lower the, the quality of the final paint job we've got, um, potentially fairly significantly. Uh, the biggest thing though, I think, is it taking more time. So I've got a little bit of paint dilution going on as a result of using the dampening pad. But the most important thing is that I'm just going at it fairly fast and we're going to get a consistent base coat all over pretty quickly with a tiny bit of texture added in. That little bit of texture, these tiny, uh, almost imperceptible lumps and bumps will actually allow us to uh, get into sections that perhaps we, we thought we wouldn't with slight buffing highlights in our final stages. So, I'll make sure to cover that towards the end of the video, but these little lumps and buttons will be able to almost use circular buffing motions and that's a way to put highlights in the middle of the flat section without it seeming like a, a worrying prospect for us. So we're going to do this all over this side piece of the model and then we'll jump back to the next step. Okay, so we've got that super deep blue purple base coat. This is a lovely colour, I'm really pleased with that actually. And to that we're going to now start introducing are comparatively way brighter um, Sotec Green. So proceed with care. I'm gonna be leaving the purple behind somewhat. And then we can start in the middle of our sections and work pretty much 
up to the edge. Um, we're still going to be we're going to be covering over a large amount of this. Uh, <laughs> never mind our previous layers, so don't be afraid to take it right up to the edges. And I start in the middle. Uh, allows you to have a high concentration there. It's also hard to make a mistake, which doesn't matter so much at these stages, but we'll do a little bit more in the ones that follow. So you start in the middle of the section, and then once the paint's been removed from your brush, or you're more aware of how much you've got on your brush, you can then choose how much pressure to apply with, with more delicate stages. So if I were to go around that section, I can do that in a, uh, a safe fashion, if you want to phrase it. Make sure to get in these little pokey bits uh, if that means stepping down a brush size here, like to make sure that we get into these teeth, then that is absolutely fine, whatever you need to. But build it up with a little bit of care. We're going to be covering over a lot of this. We need to transition fairly swiftly into our more traditional Space Wolf colours and leave behind these super deep ones, otherwise it'll look like we're painting an ultramarine. So that's a little bit too much there. If you've got some of your old colours in your brush, that really helps with coherency. Um, that type of thing um, and as you can see even if I start something that looks a little bit too full-on we can just adjust the pressure that we're applying with our brush and kind of fuzz out the edges of it I will be stepping to smaller brushes to get in these nooks and crannies don't <laughs> don't be lazy it's worth making sure that you do these steps right so uh, we'll, we'll contour everything and then we'll pick up to the next step okay so as you can see I've begun the next stage here Make sure that our dampening pad's got some water in it. Just one drop off the back of whichever brush you're using. As the brushes get smaller, the ends get smaller, so the drop will get smaller in the palette, so it all works in proportion. We're gonna start involving this Sotec Green, which is, as I've mentioned, pretty close to turquoise. Gonna start in the middle of the panels. We're not worried about making a mistake. And then when we're happy that the brush isn't exiting more paint than we can control, or we've got an idea of the amount of pressure that we wanna use, you can act accordingly and fuzz out the edges of this. I often liken this to using Microsoft Paint, the spray tool on there. Uh, anyone who is an airbrusher will probably be familiar kind of uh, putting down a block and then your fades around the edges. It's no different from that. See that I've dropped to a large. This is still a big brush. It's not small. So even this may not be uh, small enough to get sections like just skirting around this border here. I wanna make sure that I get into all these sections. This is arguably, as far as the paint job goes, one of the most important stages that we'll be doing. It's got a very interesting color. It's gonna stand out quite a lot as, maybe not immediately, it won't jump to your eyes, oh, they used Sotec green and deep blue in that section, but in our paint job, it's what should make it pretty and beautiful and sexy is that we've got, we've got something slightly more interesting in the, uh, in the shadows than people would normally expect from Space Wolves. That is the plan anyway. Hopefully it goes, uh, it goes accordingly, but um, put down these middle sections here. I'll just do one more. So you can always test it on your texture palette if you're unsure of the amount of paint that you've got coming off. So filling in these middle sections here, and then when you're happy with the amount of paint on your brush, you can go towards the edges. It doesn't matter if you touch the edges with this. Uh, we're not going to be leaving much of that really, really deep blue on show. I think we can actually get into that smaller section if we're careful. So this is a gorgeous color. Make sure that you don't miss any of the little areas around the wall for details like that. It's very easy just to concentrate on the big areas, but you want to catch everything. And then things like recesses as well. Uh, we're only working on one side, but you've got to catch the angles from this side that you can't catch from the other side. So be aware of that. We'll just do this, we'll do these steps, which will take a little bit of time, and then we'll move on to the next stage. Our next step is basically just using a higher percentage of our mid blue. Now, because this is a less saturated color, 
and a brighter color it's going to stand out very very harshly from what we've got previously so take care test it elsewhere you've probably got sections of your palette that have even had your previous mix on it see how it looks there and then as i always say when you're starting pick the middle of a section and go in from there so just the same as the previous step and similarly to the previous step once i've filled in the middle sections and I know what's going on with the paint then I feel more confident with taking it to the edges um, we are going to be increasing the amount of traditional dry brushing we're doing here so by that I mean the flicky dry brushing that catches <laughs> catches these edges like this and that's very important to make sure that they don't get lost when we come to our final edge highlights they need to have had some type of um, stages of layering that have gone on before them basically <laughs> in order to make sure that it's not just a super harsh jump to that thin region gray that we'll be adding. So this all over this section again, and we'll jump back to the next step. Yet another bonus feature. So with areas like this that are hyper textured and blocky, you may be able to get away with pretty much entirely dry brushing the, this, all of this section, the entirety of it. Um, a little bit of stippling may well be useful, but we've got our texture from our previous layers and I said I'd come back to this, the fact that we've got that texture there means that if we do spend a fair bit of time on an area dry brushing it, we're not just going to pick out the edges, we are going to pick out the middles. So if you're looking to speed up what you're doing or indeed to get a slightly lighter effect uh, in terms of the amount of paint but darker on the final model, I'm quite happy with these bits that are towards the bottom being a darker colour towards the end and things being brighter up top so I'm more than happy to kind of catch a tiny bit less of these or have the middles of the these squares whatever you want to call them the rectangles be slightly darker and that's going to ensure that I can go over it really quickly like that so very simple for the next stage again we're just increasing the amount of so tech greenomics this is now probably 95% um, the so tech green with a little touch of the blue in it we've not added that blue to the mix we might do um, throughout this stage but there's still a fair bit of it hanging around both on our palette and in the bristles of our brush this is one of the bonuses or weak points of using the same brush for an entire paint job with it, especially with dry brushing or something physical but generally in painting if you keep the same brush and you don't fully rinse it you get more coherency now that may be a bad thing if you're looking to jump to a really harsh white as a final edge highlight or something like that and that's why sometimes you'll see me change brushes for the last section of a model but uh, it can be a good thing too it can help you keep coherency and keep carrying on those uh, initial uh, tones and colors all the way through to almost the final part of your paint job which can be really useful so as i said we're going to be doing a higher percentage of traditional dry brushing as we go on making sure that we get all the sections and we're just building this up bit by bit it's actually going quite fast so uh, it's very easy at this stage to feel like you want to rush it to get to the uh, the cool following stages but keep uh, keep plugging away and remember that relatively speaking for the amount of detail and layers that you're putting down on the model we're getting a bargain for the time that we're investing here so before I step onto the next step, I'm fixing things with a little brush, getting in sections I can't get into. And the two sections that most obviously you get missed on this model are this little dip here and this little dip here. So I'm just making sure that rather than me being big stippling here, which it is going to look fine for this section, it's going to miss out this little indentation there. And you might even find yourself avoiding it because you're worried about hitting the sections next to it. So jumping in with a smaller brush will ensure that our paint job looks consistent over the entirety of the model allows me to go and check into these little corners here and just ensure that nowhere looks left out because if you're if you're trying to do a specific thing all over a model and you don't do it all over a model that's what's going to jump out in a final paint job so working down into these corners making sure i get the bits next to our wolf's nose and sections like this they're all all easily missed and a tiny bit of time and a smaller brush is all that's needed to ensure that they don't stand out like a sore thumb in our final paint job okay moving swiftly on so you see that i've dug out a big new swatch of the finrigian gray the reason for doing that is because this old one is a bit dry and even if we are dry brushing we're not trying to use 
lumpy sad paint. It's not what we're here for. Again, as I said with the previous step, this is going to feel like a big jump up. And the reason for that is again, we're jumping down in terms of uh, the, uh, the saturation of our model. And this color is very, very different from previous stages. It's less colorful. It's more towards the black and white spectrum, the grayscale spectrum. So it's a lot brighter and it's it's got a big difference in hue as well. You can see there on my palette. If, if I do that on my model, it's going to stand out like a sore thumb. So take care, proceed with caution. Use your dampening pad. That can actually, just with no normal painting, you can dilute the effect that you've got going on. If your paint is less thick coming off your brush, start in the middle of these sections and really, really carefully build up that texture here. I mean, I'm not afraid to take my time. This is where the model starts looking super interesting and finished and only at the point at which I feel I can control my brush the most am I happy to do buffing as you can see here picking out texture from previous steps or the stuff that hits the edges. Generally speaking I'll do one step having gone to the paint and then the next step I'll go to the dampening pad and that ensures that my paint is leaving my brush nicely and the brush doesn't get caked so you'll get a better final result and your brushes will last longer for it. Uh, you can get much smoother effects with more dilute paint on your dry brush and you can do that by adding water. You just have to add a tiny bit and do it carefully. So same as the last steps in terms of the areas I'm concentrating on first and then working my way towards the edges. We're really seeing a jump up now so I'll go over the entirety of the piece and we'll come in for the next step. Really starting to take shape now so as a previous step we're just adding a little bit, a higher percentage of our current color in with our previous color. And as with the previous step, proceed with care at the start. So start in the middle of your panel sections and then fuzz it out at the edges there. We're doing quite a lot of dry brushing now, as I mentioned before, especially on these lower sections you can get pretty much everything you need with some careful dry brushing. If you're not trying to do something directional, uh, normally I'd always dry brush in the same direction. Um, if I'm picking a light source or whatever then you can use buffing like I'm using here. It's a really really good solid way to get a consistent uh, result all over and not have anything looking like it's being lit from one direction. So as for me wanting the, the lower part slightly more dark, I don't particularly have it a, like an, an agenda as far as it being brighter at the front or light hitting it from this angle or from this angle or anything like that. So just kind of universally picking out the middles of these panels as brighter, the edges as darker, and then the very edges as highlighted. So we'll do that with an ever increasing amount of our Finvision Grey in there. And this should really start taking hold as far as the quality of our final paint job and how bright these sections look as well. So our final effect we're going for is really starting to take hold before our eyes. There is one section or two of this model where I think I've gone a little bit thick with the paint here and here. So we're gonna have to deal with that, but they are the sections we're looking to be the most highlighted in terms of uh, almost blocky sections of, uh, of our final stages of color. Uh, what I want to show you here is I've got pretty much pure fin region gray at this point and I want to show you when you've got a little bit on your brush just how universal you can be and how little care it can look like you're taking if you get the right amount on. I'm not making a, a large difference to any of these sections that I'm touching but they are all getting affected so I'm dragging a tiny bit of paint I've been using the dampening pad. Go elsewhere, test it on your palette. Right, we, we know exactly what's gonna happen when we take it to our model. And if we take it to our model in the same fashion I can show you on this wolf here, we're only gonna pick out um, the raised bits that we want to. So I'm doing this all over the model. And this is a real kind of a, a buffing section. You, <laughs> you're tarting up your model here with the, uh, the final stages. So we'll do this all over. Um, possibly 
going through the process a couple of times, starting stipping in the sections there if we want to pull it up. But we want our turquoise to be showing through in the recesses, but the final effect is, is meant to be nuanced by it. It's not meant to be overpowered by it. So it's really important that you take time on this stage. It's also going to start working wonders on our edges. Um, as you can see here, we've used a huge brush to cover this section. Actually, the final result is looking really, really solid. So we're doing that all over the entirety of the section and we're hoping for everywhere to basically end up I'll probably right in, which will make it look a little bit extreme. You can see where I think I've put on too much here, but these little textures here allowing us to pick it up and the final result is awesome. All right, so we have introduced Blue Horror to the equation. This is a lovely color. I've not used it before actually, but it's a very, very icy, uh, close to white, off white. You can see it here on my palette. So the effect we've got here is really good. Over the entire army, that's gonna look fantastic. Like I said, I've got a little bit thick here, but that's something you can always break up with battle damage or something like that if you have the same issue as I've had. With a color this bright, we're gonna take great care when introducing it to our final mix. So I'm gonna stipple it a tiny bit and buff it a tiny bit, but mostly this is gonna come into play on our edge highlights. So let's pop a drop of water in here. Okay, so a little bit of our previous layer and a tiny bit of our next step. Let's see how much of a difference it makes. You're better off starting too soft. That's definitely had an effect there. So I'm only putting a tiny bit on, as you'll have noticed, and proceeding with caution. A really light touch is all that's needed to get stuff like this to pick up. And what I might actually do is to get out an XL or another a large, big uh, new soft brush that's not got paint on from previous steps to get a final, pretty much undiluted stage of this going on. If we are gonna put down a pure version of this though, we have to lay a foundation of a mix of it first. So that's the importance of the step that I'm doing at the moment. Our final result here is gonna be a, uh, <laughs> A very uh, the patina just makes things look a little bit more like they've been through the wars which is fantastic because I don't think anyone's having a pretty uh, pretty lovely time in the world of Warhammer 40,000 so this patina is just gonna give us something that looks pretty fantastic especially from across the table this is gonna look absolutely phenomenal and it's if you don't want a showroom fancy looking vehicle especially if you add weathering to the equation afterwards uh, you can really get something nice. We've still got our yellowing of the wolf to go, or we could do that black, I guess. But whatever we do, it's going to add a lot of contrast to what we've got here. We've got a couple of details internally, and then you've got the option to shade in the panels as well. So I'm going to bring in a slightly higher percentage of that super, super bright blue horror. We've got our previous stages in our brush. So I'm going to work in nicely on the palette, make sure we get some of that coming through like I said now we're concentrating more on the edges very gently uh, buffing in sections if you want to brighten them up or doing traditional flicking dry brushing as I always say you want to go across it not up or down it if you are looking to hit an edge uh, pretty much with no exceptions I'd say that's true nice thing about buffing is you hit things from every angle whatever you do so that's why you see me bring it into play a lot here all right okay so I think one more step with this brush should be enough and then we're going to bring out a big brush an XL that doesn't have previous layers on it and we'll go in for a pure final step this is looking great I'd say I wish I did the entire thing, but it would have taken me several more hours. <laughs> it would look brilliant if all of this was done though, and hopefully that's something that I can get to in the future. All right, super pleased with that. So straight on to a big one. This is an XL. Dampen it a bit first, remove any excess. You want it to basically feel cold to the touch on your hand. I'm taking it pure. I will, however, mix it in the same place in the palette just in case it can pick up a tiny, tiny residue. 
of our previous stages. Work it from all angles on the brush. Hold it far back. This is the ferrule, the metal section. I hold it towards the back if I'm looking to do more soft stuff and closer up if I'm looking to do more hard stuff. So for something like this, you're almost holding it Japanese traditional uh, fine art painting style. It allows you to be a bit further back from the model as well, which sometimes I feel can help you gain a bit of perspective. Here we go. Maybe one more step of that and I think we're done. As far as the blue goes at least. Make sure we hit those edges from both sides. Up and down. Getting the recesses to these internal steps. Lovely and I'll demonstrate on the wolf now just how little is coming off here. Wolf actually looks quite nice like that. <laughs> there we go, so that is the blue done. Really, really pleased with how it's looking. As I say, we've got a little bit of build up here. I think Sotec Green has a, a slight predisposition towards caking a bit more, maybe my paint's a little bit older. I have had that one for a while, but that looks fantastic. So that's turned out really well. I'm super pleased with the result on this and hopefully you guys really enjoyed the tutorial. If you'd like to see us painting any more Space Wolf stuff, let us know. We're getting a lot of requests for different paint schemes at the moment or colors. So white, Death Guard, Tau, uh, black has been requested quite a lot. If you would like to see that, then let us know if there's something different. By all means, let us know about anything like that. We've also been painting some terrain that's gone down well. And we've got some other stuff lined up for you in the future that should be super interesting. So hit that bell notification, subscribe, and let's see you soon.